Hey, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to Life Mastery Decoded for Women and Women Entrepreneurs, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, and relationships with mind mastery and meditation tools and techniques so that you can live the life that you're proud of. Welcome to today's podcast. I remember it being dark, pitch dark, middle of the night, one, maybe two o'clock in the morning, lying next to this person, this woman that I claimed my love to and swore to love them forever and ever. And we exchanged similar words. And on this one particular night, I lay next to this person and I think to myself, I have never felt more alone. I thought we were friends. I thought we were best friends. We did lots of things together. We had lots in common. And matter of fact, we used to hang out with this big group of girls. And it was fun. We'd hang out, maybe drink a little. Uh, sometimes we would play a couple of, you know, games, card games and, you know, stuff like that. And we got to know each other and lots of laughs and lots of engagement and conversation, right? And then we went to this party. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel inadequate. I feel not attractive. I feel um, not girly enough. Uh, it has been a cross that I bear, if you will, my entire life. I grew up with a single mother in a Catholic family and she had a boyfriend, but she wasn't married. My parents had been divorced since I was about 16 months old and it was just me and my brother. And so people picked on me because of that. When you're in a Catholic uh, community, your parents are together. They're, they're married. You have 12 kids, right? So that's not what my family was. And to boot, I was a tomboy, very much active, climbing trees, playing soccer, playing football, riding my bike, swimming, climbing, everything, getting dirty all day. And I had red hair. So Ever since kids become aware of other kids and they find those things to pick on, they find those things to latch onto and point out the differences between you and them, I realized that I was different. And not only was I different in appearance, but I was different in how I felt. And I was different in how I felt about myself and how I felt about other people. So when the girls around me were engaging with flirting and playing boys catch the girls, I wanted to catch the girls too. But I knew enough, like I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what I was really feeling, but I knew that I was different. I knew that whatever it was that was in me was a secret. So now fast forward and I'm in this relationship that I am with this girl who is beautiful. She's tall and thin and she has long blonde hair. And just to be called her girlfriend meant a lot to me. And it made me feel worthy. I don't know if you have ever done that, if you have ever felt that way before, but it made me feel worthy. And so then I would act worthy and I would act confident until something would shake that confidence. And a lot of times when we would go out, one of my favorite things to do is to go to the bar and go dancing. I'm not much of a drinker. I never have been, which is always good. And I kind of pride myself in that, in that way. And we would go to the bar only where they had good music. And we went to this gay bar that was one of my favorite places to go. And the music was great. And it was a very small, dark bar. But I love to dance. And I'm good at it. And it could get people to turn their heads. And I felt so confident. And I felt alive any time that that was happening. But this one time we went to this party and I did not feel confident. Matter of fact, I felt downright unworthy and disrespected. And we're at this party. And if, you, if you've seen this girl that I called my girlfriend for a couple of years, 
you would understand why all of these other people were always flirting with her, were always trying to take her home, if you will, were always trying to say things like, if she's going home with anybody, she's going home with me, not you. And I heard those things from these people who I called my friends. And it was painful and it was hurtful. And that, my friends, is not a healthy relationship. And I knew it. I knew in my heart that it wasn't. I knew that it was a disrespected relationship. I knew that I should get out as fast as I could. But something just told me to stay with it just a little bit longer. Stick with it just a little bit more. Endure the pain and the suffering for just a few more months, maybe even years. It will change. She will see. And it didn't change. And neither did she. We go to this party and the kitchen is separate from the living room and there's music and there's, there's lots of people and there's drinking and it's just this great party, but I don't want to be there. I don't feel like being social, which is common. I am quite the introvert, believe it or not. And I go around the corner and start some small chat with a, a couple of girls that are in the kitchen. And all of a sudden I hear the music is getting louder and I hear lots of laughter and like whooping and, and something that's going on. And I, so, uh, one of my friends comes into the kitchen and she's like, hey, you know, you might want to check this out. And so I get up and a couple of my friends follow and we go into the living room and it happens to be my girlfriend giving a lap dance to another friend of ours, someone who has been flirting with her, someone who has been telling me behind the scenes that she's not going to win her over or that I'm not going to win her over, that she's going to get to win. And now my girlfriend is giving a lap dance to this girl. And I feel hurt. I feel ashamed. I feel embarrassed. My, the, my little amount of confidence went down the tubes in an instant. And what did I do? I went outside. I looked at her. We made eye contact. She did not stop. She did not look embarrassed. She did not look like she'd been caught. She looked like she was just surely enjoying herself, like she was a single woman enjoying the party. And I went outside and I paced on the sidewalk. But I was too far from home and I didn't drive. And I didn't know what to do. And all I wanted to do was get in my own car and drive as far away as I could and never turn around and never come back and never to be seen by her again. Somewhere in there, I wanted this vendetta, right? I wanted to, I wanted to show her that I was, I was somebody and she was going to be missing out. You ever been there? You ever been in that position right there that says, I am never going to do this again. I'm never going to be here ever again. And yet, here I am. I'm here in the same position again. Now fast forward to after a really, really long, quiet, upsetting car ride home. And it's now one o'clock in the morning and we decide to have this argument and I tell her how I feel. I didn't tell her that she should or shouldn't do anything. I just said, I feel disrespected. I feel embarrassed. And she looked at me right in my eyes. This woman that I declared my love, she declared her love to me. We said we were going to be together forever. And I declared my love to her. And she looks me in the eye and she says, I don't care. I don't care if you feel disrespected. I don't care if you feel embarrassed. If I want to dance with somebody, I'm going to dance with somebody. And you, Jen, can decide what you want to do with that information. But I am not going to plan my life around how you feel. And I just looked at her in awe and I just stared at this, what I thought was this beautiful woman and saw the blackened spots in her heart. She did not want to be in a relationship. Maybe she wanted the security or the, the continuity of a relationship, someone to come home to, someone to depend on, someone to, 
you know, lay next to and wake up to. But then when we were out in public, she wanted the single version of her, which of course I did not want. And I, I sat there and I looked at her, I looked her in the eye and I said, are you kidding me? I just told you that that particular thing that you did felt completely disrespected and you looked right at me so, and this morning told me you loved me and right now you're saying you don't care that you disrespected me? And she looked at me and she said, yeah, if I feel like dancing, I'm going to dance. If I want to dance with someone, I'm going to dance with someone. You can decide if you want to stay in this relationship. If I continue to do something like that, that's completely up to you. I'm not going to make that decision for you. And I just, I was like floored. And now fast forward through the night a little bit. It's, you know, after one, it's two o'clock. And here I am lying next to her in the bed, staring at the dark ceiling, wondering why am I here? How did I get here? Why am I in this relationship that hurts so much? Welcome to Life Mastery Decoded for Women and Women Entrepreneurs. My name is Jen Mack, uh, aka Lady of the Mind. Now I know I hit you with a deep, dark story, one of my personal devastating moments in my life. But I will tell you from this struggle, from that point, I started to make decisions regarding my own happiness. And it did not it did not turn into where I'm going to go to the bar and give lap dances and disrespect my partner. What I realized in that moment is that she did not want a partner. But what I realized more importantly is that it is my choice to choose the person to be with, to choose my lifelong partner that does have the common grounds that we share, right? Where we're going to be in the same, be on the same playing field. And it's going to be respectful to each other. We're going to say things like, I would never do that to you because I respect you. Because I'm in this, I'm in this relationship with you and I'm committed to you. Because if I give a lap dance to somebody who's been flirting with me for a long time, that's going to confuse people, right? And it did. And, and if you want to know the ending of that story, we did break up. And it was a hard breakup. But it led me to the next relationship that was way healthier, but, and way more respectful. So if you are listening to this podcast right now and you are in a relationship that is like that, I want you to hear these next three words, four words. These next four words are specifically for you. If you are in a relationship where you are lying next to this person that you just don't know, but yet you say you love each other, but yet disrespect is happening. Maybe that person is cheating on you. Maybe that person has hurt you in the past. Maybe you really don't trust them. Maybe the love is gone. Maybe the intimacy is gone. But I want to give you these four words because they empowered me when I heard them and they helped me to continue to move through the next stages of my life with empowerment. And those four words are, you have a choice. You have a choice. You who are listening right now, you have a choice in that relationship. You have lots of choices in that relationship. You can stay and you can continue to struggle and be hurt and be pained. You could leave and go find something new. You could learn new tools. You can work with that person. And if they're not willing to work with you, you deserve better. You, my friend, deserve better. There's absolutely no reason on this planet of the how many billions of people that walk this planet that you can't be with somebody who respects you, who loves you, who is loyal to you, who treats you amazingly. There is not a single reason why that can't happen. But what we end up doing is because we stay with these relationships that hurt us so much, we stay in them and we hope they'll change. We hope that that partner will change, but let me give you a little piece of information. Let me just educate and kind of give you a new perspective. It is not the change of that person that is what's important. It's the change in you. 
It's the change in you that is important. Because if I didn't have that experience I had with her, I would probably continue to be in relationships like that. But if I didn't lie awake for an hour or two or whatever it was that night and make the decision that I deserve better, I deserve more, I deserve love, happiness, commitment, intimacy, friendship, loyalty, sexiness. If I didn't say that, if I didn't commit to that, if I wasn't determined to go find that, I wouldn't be in that exact relationship right now. I would continue to be struggling in those relationships that I was with her. Lying awake and feeling alone. I have never felt so alone in my life than I did that night. And I've had some pretty shitty relationships. And I will tell you when the time comes. But I am telling you right now, you have a choice. So now what do you do? There are lots of things to do. And one thing I will tell you about is on my YouTube channel, I have a, I have a, um, a video that is called Heart Space. And in that video, it actually walks you through your, um, it walks you through a guided meditation that is going to help you to change that relationship without even the other person knowing about it. Now, I'm not going to go too deep in that today. We're going to, we're going to, uh, get into some other, some other things, but, but I do want you to know that that video is available. I will put it, I'll actually put the actual video link in the description of this podcast. So you are welcome to go and look at that because I am telling you and I am promising you that if you do that, that meditation, that guided meditation, even if you don't believe in meditation yet, even if you don't even understand it, and even if you don't even know what in the world I'm talking about, but if you do that guided meditation, I can guarantee you your relationships will change. But I also want you to understand that the importance of being in that relationship That it is not about the change that they go through. It's about the change that you go through. Because think about like when you're in fifth and sixth and seventh grade, you date these guys, you date these boys, and then you just keep dating and changing and you kind of pick up a few things and you're like, I I like that, but I don't like this and I like this, but I don't like that. And you just kind of keep honing what you like and don't like in a relationship, right? And then by the time you get to be an adult, you know, whether it's, you know, early 20s, mid 20s, you kind of have a really good idea. And then even as you progress through life, your ideas change and they shift, even if you think they never will. Because in seventh grade, you want the kid, you want the, you want to date the guy that wears the polo shirt. But by the time you get to be in your thirties, you want the guy who's wearing the polo shirt to also make a hundred thousand dollars a year. But when you're in seventh grade, you don't think of those things. So what do you do now? If you happen to be in a relationship like that, and I have a couple of clients, I have a couple of, uh, I'm a coach and I've done a lot of coaching. I've actually walked a lot of clients through this particular heart space meditation. And it is quite powerful how fast it works because working with energy is not only is it easier, but it's more powerful than trying to talk with a person who doesn't want to change. When I talked with her, she didn't care. She didn't care what I thought. She didn't care that what the action that she chose to do was going to hurt me. She didn't care. And so there was no amount of talking that I could do that would change her mind about that. So then it just became this big struggle. And then I just had to make a choice. Do I want to continue to be in this relationship or do I want to find something and, and move on and hopes to find something that is happier? That, that feels happier and mutually respectable. And that's what I chose to do. Now, it did take me a while to leave the relationship, but ultimately I did. And it was not like years later. It was probably months later. So um, how, do you, how do you now move through this process when you're in a relationship like that? And what does that actually mean? What does it actually look like? On the last podcast, uh, just yesterday, we talked about intentions. And when you are going out into the world, or let's say you're in a relationship right now. Let, let me talk to you as if you're in a relationship right now, but you're feeling pretty lonely. I want you to start setting the intention 
If you decide to stay in the relationship, I want you to start working with the energy of setting the intention. And I want it to look like uh, it's coming from a place of more curiosity. Hmm, I wonder. Now, what does that mean? I don't, you know, explain this a little bit more, Jen. Come on, you're being a little bit talking in code here. So when we start to put out the energy of the intention, we're coming home from work and he or she is probably going to be laying on the couch, not doing anything. We are already setting the intention of what we're expecting to see when we get home. And you're probably saying, well, yes, but for the last 10 years, 20 years, that's what has happened. And what I would like to say from that point on, everything that happens is all past thought coming into manifestation. And now what I want to challenge you to do is to shift your thinking to be from a place of curiosity. Hmm, I wonder if Jen's right. Huh, I wonder what's going to happen tonight. I wonder what great thing is going to happen. I wonder what, what he or she will be doing tonight that'll be so wonderful. And we have to come from a different perspective and a different point of view in order to start slowly shifting the energy our way. Now, this is not about manipulating. This is about shifting the energy because if you are sending out the energy that the person you're with is disrespectful, they cannot show up in your life in any other way other than disrespectfully. Let me say that again. If you are sending out the energy that this person that you're with, this partner, this person, it could be anybody, could be, it, this could be your friend, your sibling, your mom, your mother-in-law, your, your father, anybody, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, anybody. But if you continuously send out the intention that this person is supposed to act a certain way, every time I'm with them, they're disrespectful. Every time I'm with them, they argue with me. Every time I'm with them, they ignore me. If you are setting that intention with your words, they cannot show up in your life any differently. So I want to give you a moment to digest that. How I, I like to use the analogy of I'm walking around with powder, colored powder in my hand. And let's say for this example, with these negative intentions of people treating me poorly, I have blue powder in my hand. And as soon as I see that person, I throw blue powder at them, covering them in blue. But then I get mad that they're blue and not orange. Do you see how weird that is? Do you see how that doesn't make any sense? But until you know about energy and how energy and intentions work, you have no idea how to work with this. So I'm saying to be curious, which curiosity, even just saying things like, hmm, I wonder, like try that right now. You could pause this audio, this podcast, and you can just say that and say it a couple times with anything that you're about to go do that you just, that you think is going to have this negative, that you always think it's going to have this negative outcome. I want you to be, hmm, I wonder what my conversation with my mother-in-law is going to be like tonight. Hmm. I wonder what my kids are going to be like tonight. And then feel the difference between that statement and another statement that you make that is something like, oh, I'm so sick of going home because the kids never do anything. There's always all these chores for me to do. My husband's always laying around on the couch. This is so stupid. I hate this, right? Feel the difference between the two. And I'm going to challenge you today to come up with a different outcome. Come up with a different scenario. Just try it. Try to put the orange powder in your hand and throw that instead and be just a little bit curious. Because what I started to do back then to get out of that relationship is, hmm, I wonder if there is someone else out there for me. Now you might say, why didn't I change the relationship that I was in? Why didn't I say, hmm, I wonder if she's going to start acting, you know, I wonder if she's going to be different this time, or I wonder if our, you know, if our relationship could be, become more respectful. Well, I think at this point I was so hurt by some of the actions and some of the things that she said to me that 
I didn't want to stay in this relationship. So my goal was to move on and to move out um, in the best possible scenario and feel good. And it would just be kind of the better decision for both of us, right? Now, even though it was a hard breakup, and surprisingly, we were not together for very long. It was like two and a half years. It was not very long at all. But it was exactly what I needed to boost me into the next relationship, which was was way healthier. But it, it, it kind of created the foundation and the platform for me to stand on and to become confident to move into this next relationship. Like I had to level up. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Now, you very well could be in a marriage. You guys could have kids together. You could own a house, a business. You guys could really be deep in, in, in all of your liveliness together, right? You know, married, we have kids, we have debt together, we have a business, we have a house, we have property, we have rental property, whatever. And, and I totally understand. But my goal is to shift your perspective to find happiness. Because once there's happiness, all of the other things that you're looking for will follow. All of the other things, abundance, health, um, a great career, a great relationship, more, more everything, more fun, more intimacy, more adventure, everything that you're looking for. But it first starts with happiness. And this is how you get it. And so I challenge you to before, whatever your next segment is, hmm, I wonder. That is my challenge for you. So... And don't forget to go over to the YouTube. I will put the link in the description and go over to the YouTube and check that out. I don't mean the YouTube. I know it's called YouTube, but go over to the YouTube um, video that I posted over there uh, for the heart space meditation. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for these few minutes. I hope that if anything, you are able to get just a little bit of knowledge and a perspective shift. And if you are one of those people that is in a relationship where you feel more alone with this person than you ever did without that person, I challenge you to start throwing different colored powder. I will see you in the next podcast. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for listening. And if you liked this episode, please take the time to like and share. Also, please visit me on my other social media pages. I'm on Instagram, Jen Mac, Lady of the Mind. I'm on Facebook, where we have this community titled Life Mastery Decoded. And it's a community of women and women entrepreneurs where we come together to support one another in sharing our successes and struggles. You can also check out my YouTube channel where I share my teachings and my personal journey. And it's simply titled Jen Mac, J-E-N-M-A-C. Have a great day and I hope to hear from you.